this week's episode of Colonial Sports Center. As always, I'm your host, Greg Sutton, but alongside me again this week, Logan Carney. It's great to be back, Greg. It's always great to be back. I love having you on, Logan. <laughs> we always have a good time, but this week we've got a couple extra bodies in the studio that we don't usually have. That's right. We're going to be sitting down with the Sports Talk in the Berg team, uh, Matt Kurtick and Nick Hedrick, both in the studio as we preview the men's and women's basketball seasons. Absolutely, and later in the show, John Hayes is going to get to sit down with Nick Perkusic and Justin Adama and talk about their first couple of games that they had and what they're expecting out of their season so far. But before we jump into any of that, we, we uh, talked about football already a little bit uh, in the opening, but we got to talk about how the game actually went. We're going to see a couple of highlights, but Robin Moore's football has been kind of struggling lately. They've lost their past three or four games. They're trying to get back into their winning ways. Their last game they won was against a Division II opponent. Uh, Virginia State. So why don't we go to Joe Walton to see how the Colonials fared this past weekend. Colonials Marauders. First thing we're going to see here, Jimmy Walker. A touchdown pass to Matthew Gonzalez. Middle of the end zone. Put the Colonials on the board first. 7 nothing. Next we're going to see Jimmy Walker again in the pocket. Another pass to Matthew Gonzalez. His second of the day. Total of 83 yards for him. Good day for Matthew Gonzalez. Now into the second quarter. Jimmy Walker really just controlling the ball through the air. Here we'll see him go deep ball to Brandon McGee, who would score off that touch after that pass from Jimmy Walker. Third quarter of action here down to Joe Walton Stadium. Touchdown pass to no other than Matthew Gonzalez. Yeah, Matthew Gonzalez tied the school touchdown record in regular season in this game. Mm -hmm. He had a great day, Logan. He's been doing really well this season overall. But now we can see Elijah Jackson showing off why he's been voted the rookie of the uh, rookie of the week three weeks in a row, and Robin Morris would end up going on to beat the Central State Marauders 49 to 45 in four quarters of action. The last time Clark and his Colonials won against was against Virginia State on September 8th. But moving on from football, we're going to go into the world of hockey as the women's hockey team to traveled up to Erie to take on the Lakers. After a tough non-conference slate to start the year, in which they took on the number one team in the country, St. Lawrence and RIT, they traveled up to Mercier's to begin conference play. Let's see how they did in game one of the two-game set. Colonial is traveling to Mercyhurst Lakers and Mercyhurst Ice Center in Erie. Here in the first period, we're going to go by Emily Harley. Harley with her first goal of the season. She hardly needed any help on that one. And Robert Morris has a 1-0 lead. <laughs> Later in the first period, there's a scramble in front of the net. And Lexi Templeman made it 2-0 for the Colonials. Unfortunately for Robert Morris, that is the last time that they will score in this one. Mercer CC gets a goal there as we head into the third period, my apologies, it is the third period um, as Mercyhurst taking on Robert Morris as we see a goal by Mercyhurst to get their third. They take a lead there, three to two now, still in the third period. A little scramble in front of Knight, great save. They're gonna move the puck up the ice and we're getting an empty netter goal to make it four to two and that will be the final score. Lexi Templeman, the goal in the game and three shots. So the Lakers pull away four to two. After the two-goal loss they experienced the night before, the Colonials would look to be on the revenge-seeking hunt against the Lakers of Mercyhurst just off the coast of Great Lake Erie. Let's go back to the Mercyhurst Ice Center to see if the Colonials could clinch their first win in conference early in the season. We're going to see the Colonials really moving the puck pretty well up at the point there, but the first goal in the game is going to be scored by no other than Kirsten Welsh. She's going to get that one for the Colonials, but this time just a great forechecking there by the Colonials, and it's going to end up being a goal by Natalie Marcuse. And it's just the Colonials really jumping on the opportunity early here, Logan. Yeah, as you can see, it was, it was something that they did last game. Let's see if they can hold up in this one. Absolutely. Next, we're going to get to see Sarah Quaranta with her first goal of the season, uh, making it 3 0 for the Colonials there in the second period. But now into the third period of action. This is where things kind of got interesting. Uh, we're going to get to see a goal here by JC Gebhard. That's going to be another goal, putting the Colonials up 4-0. Robert Morris really uh, moving the puck around well. But next we're going to see the Lakers score. And they said, hey, Alexa, Vasco, can you put it in for us? And she said, absolutely I can, making it 4-1. But the Colonials would end up winning the game 5-1 over the Lakers. The men's hockey team also started their conference season this past weekend against the Army after splitting their first two games against Bowling Green. Let's see how they fared against the Black Knights. Robert Morris hosting the Black Knight starts with a quick goal by Justin Adama, who is in the studio later today, sitting down with our very own John Hanna. Army, though, 
is about to tie things up right after that. One to one now, still in the first period. We see another look at that shot, and Greg, you know, it's a real close one throughout, but one to one here early. Absolutely. And if Clones do one thing really well, it's always fighting whenever they're in a close game. As we move on to the second period now, Army, the shot there, but a great wall by Francis Marach is going right off that left leg. A second chance by Army again, no good. Colonials now with a shot in front of the net, but you see a great save by the, by the goalie. As we head on to the third period now, our, uh, RMU tying things up. It's just under 20 minutes to go. Things tied up two to two, but unfortunately neither team could pull away and the two teams will end with a tie. After the fourth period of play could not decide a winner the night before, the Black Knights and Colonials hit the ice again the very next night in Colonials Arena to see who would come out of the weekend with a win. Could Army be Army strong two nights in a row? We're going to have to find out here. Colonials Black Knights once again. Black Knights are going to strike first here with a goal by Eric Butte. Big goal to set the Knights up early here at Colonials Arena. We're going to see that one again. Good pass to the far side, but another good pass across to the slot and past Francis Murat. Good passing there by the Black Knights. But now we're going to see the Colonials try to uh, put the puck in the back of the net. And they would with Nick Perkusic, who was also in studio with us tonight. Logan. That's right. <laughs> Two of our shout-outs both in studio tonight. Stay tuned. Absolutely. You're not going to want to miss it. John Hanna sitting down with both of those two. Next, we're going to see the Colonials on the attack again. This time, Justin Adamo with his goal. Putting the Colonials up 2-1 to one in the first period. Exciting stuff here. It's going to be a good second period here as we jump into action there. And But this time, it's going to be a goal by Zach Ivanko for the Black Knights, tying things up. But in the third period of action, we're going to have to see who would come out on top. Black Knights really move the puck around, and they would end up winning 5-2 to two against the Colonials. You know, Greg, we teased it during our you know, little re recaps there of the games, but we got a couple people in the studio coming up. Absolutely, yeah. John Hanna, one of our hockey writers, is going to need to sit down with Nick Perkusic and Justin Adama, as we've said multiple times before. <laughs> but later in the show, you're also going to need to sit down with a couple people. Yeah, I'm going to sit down again. Sports talking the Berg Boys invading the show as we're going to get to talk about and see who men's and women's basketball previewing them as they came out, you know, yesterday about their preseason rankings. Yeah, absolutely. And but you're going to want to see all this and more after the break. I was physically at school, but my mind was not at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met that Narvaez. She started helping sport. me a little bit like, Nia, yeah, I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So, I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. <laughs> All right, I'm here with uh, Justin Damo and Nick Perkusic, both on the men's hockey team. And uh, what do you guys think of uh, the season so far? I know it's only five games in, but uh, what do you guys think of how you've been doing so far? Um, I think uh, so far it's been a little bit of a learning process. I mean, we have uh, quite a few freshmen, so uh, trying to get them kind of acclimatized to our culture and that is uh, 
I don't maybe not showing the wins we'd like early in the season, but uh, so far it's there's been some learning experiences. And Justin? Yeah, I think we we struggled the last two games. We we didn't play our game and didn't play hard enough. But uh, this week in practice was uh, really good for the team. Everyone got back on page, and we'll we'll get better this weekend. And then, uh, well, both you guys, when and why did you guys uh, start playing hockey? Yeah, so I'm from Canada, so it was kind of just. Uh, something you do when you're growing up there. I mean, I, I was pretty young, so my parents uh, you know, get, got me skates, got me on the ice, and I kind of grew up around the rink. So it was about right of passage. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, I started playing when I was three. Uh, my parents just saw uh, something in the newspaper about uh, skating, so they brought me to the rink, and I just liked it, and it started here. And then uh, did either of you have any siblings that you looked up to who skated or played hockey that used this competition as well? Yeah, my, I had an older sister who was a figure skater. She figure skated until she was about 15, so uh, that kind of kept me in the rink as well. I was always playing mini sticks and in the rinks and whatnot, so I kind of grew up around there. Nice. And then Justin? I was actually the first one in the family to uh, play hockey, uh, but my brothers now play hockey as well, so I kind of started uh, the way. Nice. And then, uh, Nick, uh, you, last year you did play with uh, Brady Ferguson, obviously one of the best armies had. And uh, how has his leadership last year helped you to mentor people like, uh, well, freshmen like Justin? Yeah, Brady was, uh, Brady was pretty special. I mean, for a guy who was so skilled, uh, it was good for a young guy like me to be able to watch him and see all the extra work he put in. I would say he was up there for, for the guy who was working on stuff after practice the most, taking care of his body. So he was a good guy to learn from, to uh, take a little bit more of a pro view, and that's probably why he is where he is. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Justin, last year you actually played with uh, current Colonial, Aiden Spalassi. How was it playing with him in uh, Lone Star? Uh, it was really great. We uh, we both started playing junior together, so two years together uh, was really helpful. We got ready for college together, and we really learned uh, like the hard play. All right, and then uh, if either of you could were drafted by any NHL team, what would it be? Um, I mean, I'd take any of them, but uh, I was always growing up, I was a Minnesota Wild fan, oddly enough, so um, I probably would go to Minnesota. And Justin? Yeah, I would pick any of them, but if I had to pick, I would pick Pittsburgh. Nice, and then, uh, well, Nick, two years ago, uh, you were on Brooks Bandits, you played with Cal McCarr, who was the fourth overall pick by Colorado. How was it playing with somebody of his just caliber and skill set? Yeah, he's a... Uh, I guess he's a lolly Brady in a way. I mean, he's he's definitely a special player, such a good skater, but uh, a really good person too. Uh, can't say good, good enough things about him. Um, and uh, yeah, he was a good friend, so I uh, just wish him all the best. Nice. And then, uh, well, you played for the French national team as well. How was that uh, just getting that experience with national teams against teams like Canada, US, Sweden? Uh, it was really, uh, really cool. Like I. Really appreciated the experience. Uh, I was really proud to be in the national team. Uh, I got named captain on my last year too, so I was really honored to be part of this team and represent my country. And it was obviously like really good games to play. And then uh, both of you, what's your favorite thing about Pittsburgh? I know you're from Alberta, obviously, and you're from France, and then Houston or Lone Star. So what's your favorite thing about Pittsburgh and the surrounding area? Um, for me, it'd probably have to be uh, my teammates. I mean, I, I guess that's not really Pittsburgh, but uh, being able to hang out with my teammates and and uh, you know just hanging out with the guys, that's been uh, probably my, my favorite thing. Nice. Uh, something I love about, uh, like about Pittsburgh is the weather. Uh, <laughs> way different from Texas and France, but uh, yeah, I like the city. I like the people here. Everyone's nice. It's a small community, and everyone knows everyone. So. Nice. And then uh, Nick. This year you have almost half the goals as you did last year, and you've only played five games. What's the big reason for that uh, increase in production? Uh, I'd, I'd probably have to say confidence. Uh, last year we had a lot of older guys. I, I maybe didn't get as much opportunity, but uh, this year I, I've just kind of been focusing on trying to step up to the plate and take a bigger role, and I guess with that maybe comes a little more of the visual, um, like the goals mm -hmm. and stuff. but. Uh, yeah, so far it's been good. Nice. And then, uh, well, you guys play RIT this weekend, tomorrow, and on Saturday. What are you guys going to do? I'm not guessing. Do you guys have practice tomorrow as well? Or what yeah. are you guys going to do to prepare for the game tomorrow? Um, yeah, I mean, we have our morning skate tomorrow, but uh, I guess it all kind of started 
um, Monday when we had our practice. I guess we, we all kind of started looking forward to this weekend pretty early after the not so great weekend we just had. So um, we've been working really hard in practice, doing a lot of battle stuff and gearing up for what's going to be a tough weekend. Yes, and then, uh, well, again, what did you? What made you guys choose to come to RMU? Were you guys recruited, or did you guys just decide to come? Yeah, uh, I think we were both recruited, obviously, but um, I, I was playing at a showcase at uh, in the uh, Alberta Junior Hockey League, and Cody was actually, Cody's our assistant coach, and he was the first one to kind of identify me. He was the first one to um, uh, recruit me, and I just decided it was a good fit. I came and visited, and... I decided this is a good place to be. Nice. And then Justin? Uh, same for me. We had a, a showcase in the North American Hockey League, and um, Coach Coley actually talked to me right after my first game, and it kind of started from here, and then we just talked more, and I got there. Nice. Well, well uh, we're going to go back to the desk with uh, our own Greg Sutton as he talks uh, volleyball. Thank you, John Hayden, Nick Berkusik, and Adam, or Justin Adamo. Last Friday, the volleyball team hosted the Central Connecticut State University Blue Devils up at the North Athletic Complex. The last time these two squads faced one another on the court, CCSU took the win three sets to none. Could the Colonials claim their third in-conference victory of the season? Here we're going to see. Um, well, I don't think this is quite the right clip, but we're going to roll with it. Robert Morris here, really just volleying the ball, getting the kill there, putting the first point up on the board. We're jumping into the second set. Uh, Logan, I think this is actually supposed to be you, so why don't you just jump in and take over here? It is, you know, the, the, the Bryant Bulldogs leaving Bulldog territory, coming to Colonial Country. He's here into the third set, one to one now, as the, as the Colonials. A, a very impressive match by Robert Morris. Taylor Lord, 18 kills in this match. As Robert Morris, we go to the, the, fourth, the fourth set now. As, as we go into the um, as we go into the fourth set, uh, Bryant here, Bryant pulling away, and we're going to go on to the fifth set. Robert Moore is actually pulling away, 15, 16 right now. We're in the final seven blocks as Robert Morris falls three to two. It was a close fought loss for the women's volleyball team. Now, now we get into the Central Connecticut State University volleyball match, which happened actually before the Bryant match this past weekend. So why don't we just dive right in? Robert Morris and the Blue Devils, Colonial hosting the Blue Devils. The Blue Devils left Blue Devil territory to come and call the Colonial, <laughs> the colonial Country. Absolutely, Logan. And the, just a great volley here. Big dig there uh, for the Colonials, but also a big block by uh, Central Connecticut. But uh, just a great volley here to show both teams uh, what they're worth. Yes, as we see kills after kills by Taylor Lord, Emma Granger. Very, very impressive games by the match by those two. Seven to four now. Robert Morris leads it in set two. Central Connecticut State, though, up one set to nothing. Speaking of Emma Granger, if I'm not wrong, I think she had, yeah, 19 kills in the night, Logan, which is very impressive if we've seen one there. Yeah, 19 kills in that night. She had 12 kills in the next night. That's a lot of kills over one weekend. 24-21 here in the second set. As we move on to the fourth set, though, Blue Devils up two to one on Robert Morris, and they will take this fourth set and pull away three to one. And when we come back, Logan, we're gonna take a quick break first. We're gonna talk men's and women's soccer. The men's basketball team had their first exhibition game of the season, and uh, you're gonna get to sit down with a couple people. Yes, it's gonna be a crossover episode, as we've been saying throughout the episode. Um, as, as a couple sports talk in the uh, bird guys come and join me over on the side set as, as we get to break down and preview men's and women's basketball. You don't wanna miss this. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnice. She started helping me a little bit like me. I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So, I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. 
Don't wait. Communicate. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. Welcome back to After the tough double overtime loss just five days before against Fairleigh Dickinson Knight, the Colonials were still searching for that third in-conference victory win uh, against the undefeated LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds on their home pitch. But would they be able to pull off the win? The Blackboard, the Blackbirds soared to a fifth straight in-conference win with the winning goal being scored by the Norwegian junior Marius Koss. That was his third goal of the season. Koss scored in just the 11th minute of play at the North Athletic Complex. The Colonials were outshot by LIU Brooklyn 13-12 with six of LIU Brooklyn shots hitting the net while Robert Morris only hit the net four times. The 90-minute match had a total of 36 fouls called with six yellow cards being handed out equally to each side. The Colonials will play again on Sunday against the Central Connecticut State University Blue Devils. That's right, Greg. The Colonials did play again against the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils, but they fell to um, they fell to the Blue Devils by the score of one to nothing, and gave the Blue Devils their first win on the season. Scoring the goal for Central Connecticut State was Luis Bedore. The Colonials had 18 shots in the game, but only nine of them were on net. Head coach Bill Dennison said after the game, quote, the real stats should be quality chances, and there's two or three a game, and hope you get all three, but there wasn't for us today, end quote. The Colonial season is all but done as they currently sit in sixth place in the NEC and are down three points from current fourth place seed spot holder St. Francis Brooklyn. The Colonials take on Mount St. Mary's this week before ending their season against St. Francis University next week. Schleicher and the women's squad were looking to claim their first back-to-back -back victories of the season this past Friday when the Colonials traveled up to Rhode Island to face the Bryant University Bulldogs in the dog pen. But Robin Moore, would Robin Morris be able to keep the Bulldogs on their leash, or would the Colonials be bitten by another loss? The Colonials lost the contest two goals to zero against Bryant University. The, the two Bulldogs that found the back of the net were Remy Mana and Rachel Benz, both Bulldogs scoring before the first 10 minutes of play could run off the clock. Collectively, the Colonials only hit the net twice in the 90 minutes of play, while Bryant was able to hit the goal a total of 10 times with two of those shots going in. Jane Schleicher was held to zero shots on goal in the game. The Colonials will play again Sunday to finish off the New England road trip in Fairfield, Connecticut against the Sacred Heart University and still on that search for their third conference win. The Colonials pioneered a victory against Sacred Heart this past weekend after defeating them by the score of 2-1. to one. Jane Schleicher continued her historic season by scoring one of the goals in the one of the two goals in the game, while Brittany O'Connell scored the second goal for Robert Morris. Scoring for Sacred Heart was Lindsay Savacco, who entered the game from the bench. Robert Morris has been officially eliminated from playoff contention, so their last game is this Sunday against LA Brooklyn at home for Robert Morris's senior night. The, bas the men's basketball team had their first chance to lace up and take the court against the Kent State Golden Flash this past weekend over in Kent, Ohio. The game that was originally supposed to be a closed scrimmage was actually turned into a game for hurricane relief efforts. The Colonials dropped the exhibition game to the Golden, Golden Flash 89-62. The Colonials shot 22%, 22.7% from the three-point land and 59.0% on the from the free throw line while in Kent, Ohio. 
while Kent State shot 38.1% from behind the arc and 72.4% while at the three-point line or free throw line. John Williams led the Colonials in total points with 14 points, one steal and five assists. Kobe Thomas came off the bench and had 12 points of his own with one block and five rebounds. While on the other side of the ball, Golden Flash had two players, Jalen Avery and Antonio Williams, that scored 16 points in the game. Williams had five assists, six rebounds, and two steals against their out-of-conference opponent. The Colonials would play their first regular season game in Los Angeles, California against the University of Southern California on November 6th. Speaking of basketball, I'm here with two of my fellow writers for the cover of the men's and women's basketball team, Matt Kurtick and Nick Hederick. Guys, thank you for joining us today. Now, we're just going to jump right in. So, guys, from looking at the men's basketball perspective, Matt and Nick, for the women's basketball, who do you think are the players to watch for the teams this year? Uh, for the men's basketball team, a player to watch is Manny McConnell, obviously. He's a four-year starter. Uh, you know, he's a hometown guy. Obviously, he wants to get an NEC title before he graduates. And, of course, you got to look at Kobe Thomas, who was last year's uh, NEC Rookie of the Year. Well, Logan, I want to say really quick, it's great to leave sports talk territory <laughs> and enter CSC territory. Uh, I think we have to look at the four sophomores on this team. Nina Augustin, uh, Hinoku uh, Ikematsu, Laura Carrasco, and Megan Callahan. All of them played a big part last year. With seniors like Jocelyn Jones and Megan Smith leaving, I expect them to have an even bigger role this year. Now, guys, um, where do you guys expect for them to finish up in conference season this year? Uh, the men probably will finish about fourth or fifth. They were projected to be fifth uh, in the recent pools that were released uh, yesterday uh, and that's kind of what they've been the last couple years and I expect them to probably get to the semifinals after upsetting somebody and I think RMU can win the conference this year I mean last year them and St. Francis both went 16 and 2 in conference play after that the next team was the 9 and 9 conference play uh, Sacred Hearts team so there's a real big drop in competition I believe I think it's St. Francis or RMU my pick is RMU all right, guys. Well, thank you both for joining us today. I wish we had more time, but we're going to throw it to a quick commercial break. But when we be back, we will preview the upcoming games for next week. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad. That's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! And welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Why don't we just jump right into the upcoming games for this weekend and next week? Of course, well. sounds like a good plan. Absolutely. Let's just jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> just like this swimming pool, you just got to get right in there, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this Friday, we've got women's hockey versus Lindenwood at 3.05, and men's hockey also uh, versus RIT here in Moon Township at 7.05. And of course, don't forget on Saturday, women's soccer in their senior night on LA Brooklyn. The women's cross country taking in the NEC Conference Championships this weekend. And football going up against Saint, Saint Francis. Absolutely. And as I say in an infomercial, but wait, there's more. 
Sunday, golf is going to be at home at the Garden Airport in FGCU as well as Monday. So that's going to be exciting. David Schmance is going to be out there just playing his best eight team. It's going to be very exciting. Don't forget to check John Hanna's recap on that later next week. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week, everybody.